There are many tight-knit hobby-based communities around the world and the woodworking community in the UK is no exception to this. It's quite common to hear names come up time and time again and today I'm finally visiting one of those. I've heard things about this place through students of mine, through colleagues, comments, friends, all sorts, which is quite astounding considering the relatively small scale of operation going on here. Now we're located about 30 minutes east of Oxford in a little village called Dinton and I can't wait to see what all this hype's about. All right, good morning, everybody. We are here with Blaze, who is going to show us around this lovely wood yard he's got. Uh, do you want to quickly explain a little bit about what you do here? Yeah, sure. I, um, I've been cutting trees for 20 years mm -hmm. and uh, I bought a little forklift truck and then managed to load trunks onto the, um, the truck to bring them home. And then so I was bringing longer lengths home and I was thinking, oh, I've got to use this wood for more than just firewood. It's got to be more value in this yeah. and more fun. <laughs> nice, nice. So all of this stuff is stuff that you've either chopped down yourself or sourced, yeah. saving it from burning piles. That's right, yeah. Nice, yeah. that's awesome, awesome. So we're going to have a quick look around this yard. Uh, there's some amazing stuff here, which is very difficult to come across from my experience anyway. Uh, yeah, it's an absolute gold mine. So let's have a look. Yeah, so it's all air dried wood that I've been um, saving up for mm -hmm. years and years now and making small projects with and stuff and trying to get a bit of a name and trying to shift some wood on now and yep cool so what have we got here what sort of materials are you keeping uh, so this is oak on the top here yep this is uh, locally sourced within two miles of the yard and then underneath cedar that was from a housing development just down the road um, the tree was coming down and that's all just about ready dried now to go uh, more oak at the back here. Lots of oak. <laughs> lots, lots of oak, <laughs> yeah. And then this stuff, this is what caught our eye beforehand. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this stuff. Redwood. Redwood. Sequoia gigantium, yeah. That's 1.8 metres at the bottom. Um, we can cut that with our special chainsaw bar uh, up to 1.8 metres. Mm. And obviously you've cut this to, what's that, four inches? Four inches, yeah. Four inches. This is what I mean, stuff like this is hard to come by, I think. I don't think mm. you see four inch slabs very often, let alone that size. Yeah. Um, what's the benefits of cutting it to that thick? I, it was a massive piece of wood. Yeah. And the, my feeling, my gut feeling when I'm cutting trunks up is that it wants to be, the, the wider it is, the thicker it wants to be. It right. Kind of, it just looks odd if it's really wide and super thin. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the thinking behind that. Absolutely. And then obviously if someone was to want a, you know, if they like the look of this four inch one, I guess you could re-slice that. Half, yeah. yeah. No so, you know, you've got extra versatility here as well, cutting it that thick. Mm -hmm. So, oh yeah, it's amazing this stuff. It's really nice. So you say this stuff's oak? Yeah, it's oak. Looking good. And then we've got these bits here. What are these normally used for? Uh, so I made a load of cubes for a sculpture exhibition and yep. people loved them. And I, so I've just tried to keep going every few months, cut a few more cubes out. This, these are a bit of an experiment. Mm -hmm. These are Leylandii. Right. And I, I, there's just so, it's really great wood for outside. It'll last 50 years outside untreated. Wow, wait, what you was know? it called, sorry? Leylandii. Leylandii. So it's a hybrid between a Lawson and a Cypress tree. Okay. And this chap called Lord Leylandii had both on his property and they hybridized, made this very fast growing hedge. It's the kind of one you see neighborhood wars over because it grows so fast right. and tall and blocks out all the light. So we're always taking it down. Yeah. Um, and the wood's not brilliant for burning. It's not really brilliant for anything. Um, so it's an experiment and I, I've sold some to people and they've really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And so I just trying to get more uses for Leylandii. So that's just sort of outdoor seating or outdoor yeah. ornaments kind of thing. Exactly. Nice, yeah, nice. Yeah. And then obviously the spalted beach here as well. Yeah, the spalted beach, that's what people just absolutely love. Self-explanatory, yeah. isn't it? It's just it, beautiful stuff. It is stunning when it's all polished up. Yeah, yeah, mm. really nice, cool. Okay, and then working along. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is Spalter Beach. Um, again, from less than a mile away from the yard. Mm -hmm. And it came down in a storm. I, I, I cleared it all up for them in the garden and said, could I have the bottom bit of the trunk? It's when I was first starting milling. 
and I bought a longer bar to do it, a 60 inch bar. And so that's the last few bits of that left really. Yeah. Uh, uh, monkey puzzle underneath came down on Valentine's Day about six years ago, something like that. Yeah. Um, and that's stunning. I made a lovely set of table and benches mm -hmm. with, um, you know, joinery kind of uh, waterfall edges on yep. and with these lovely knots in. Oh, I mean, yeah. Monkey just, puzzle, I'll say. We had, we had some of this at Surrey Timbers, which I think people saw in a previous video, and it was cut into blocks like this, covered in knots throughout, whereas Blaze yeah. has actually sawn this horizontally or through and through, and you see the knots along the entire length mm. of wood, which is, yeah, that's really nice. It's a really pale, clean look. You know, yeah. it's kind of, kind of like a modern wood when mm -hmm. it's all sanded up. It's, yeah. Um, and I have had inquiries to export this, but there's an embargo, you can't export it. Oh, on the CITES list. Because it's endangered it? yeah, 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 in Peru, about that. Yeah. where it's from. Oh, wow. Hmm. Yeah. It's awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, lots of cherry yep. in here, uh, which is lovely. It's great, great wood. Uh, people do chopping boards from it and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's absolutely fantastic wood. That's all cherry at the back there. Again. Mantel pieces, makes lovely mantel pieces. Thick stuff, once yeah. again. Yeah. yeah, I mean that one there, that's another four inch one, is it? Yeah, it's sort of mantel piece stock, really. Yeah. I, stuff like that, I because it's so narrow, it, I find it's that's the best best economy I can get out of mm -hmm. cutting the trunk. Absolutely, yeah. Legs and things out of that as yeah. well. I think yeah, it's quite, sure. a, quite a good one. Mm. Nice. Uh, limited amount of you, but uh, it is very nice. Um, again, it's it's heavy and hard to work with, <laughs> but it does look stunning when it's all done. Yeah. Um, I try and just keep all sorts of bits, even though this has got a cavity in and the wood is broken. Yeah. Um, people, you know, can fill it with glass or other things and you know, yeah, yeah. have fun with it. Definitely. It's cool, yeah. It's good that it's just not burnt. There's potential for stuff like this to be used oh, in. Absolutely. You know, it's up to your creativity. It's not just square edge stuff that you're yeah. used to seeing at other timber yards. Yeah. This is a big sycamore, which again came down. I spotted it on Twitter, I think. And I just sent the guy a message, said, <laughs> what, do you, what, what are you doing with that? And he said, oh, nothing. If you get it out of my ditch, you can have it. Brilliant. He chopped all the top up for firewood. And yeah, it was brilliant. It's a massive crotch. Again, we had to use the double bar on that with the uh, 1.8 meter cut. Yeah, yeah. I'm quite excited. I've not used any of it yet, so I'm quite excited to see what, what's in that when it's lovely, first sanded. It? And then this bit, what is this? This is a field maple. Yeah. It was a hollow trunk. We cut it down in somebody's garden and I just sort of fell in love with it with the burr on it. I kind of just loved it and I've been, it's been here and I've been thinking, should I cut it into coffee tables, bases? And I've had ideas of putting shelves in here. Yeah. And all sorts of ideas. Again, so much potential for it. Yeah. And just the, uh, the amount of burrs that it's covered in as well, apart yeah. from anything. I mean, this side, yeah. actually, I didn't see this before. Oh, it's complete, that on is... the back, it's completely covered. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, a, garden, a, a garden's kind of sculpture, if it was all sanded up, would be incredible as well. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty stunning piece. Okay. Anything that's a bit odd, I always just keep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's it, but it's just, it's so hard to come by this kind of stuff, isn't it? Yeah. Lovely. And then this is the next section from the redwood, is yep. here. So again, I, I milled this, um, the center piece is always a bit more unstable. So I did that, at, I think that's six inches, 150 six, mil. Yeah. That is 150 mil <laughs> um, there. And that's four meters long. If anyone wants a solid wood workbench. Yeah, a conference <laughs> table. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah um, the and then I've got it. some three inch here and uh, some two inch, I think, two inch, 50 mil. 40 mil. And is redwood, can that be used for outdoor furniture as well? Is it durable? It, yeah, it is. It'll, yep. There's buildings in America that mm. are hundreds of years, well, you know, a lot, very old. I don't know exactly, but yeah. it, it lasts really well as kind of wany edge siding. Right. So it's great for outside. Amazing. Um, Does it keep the color? No, not bleach? outside. Yeah, yeah, it goes to silver. Right, okay. Yeah. 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 It's typical cedar and everything Yeah, that as well. kind of thing, yeah. Right. Um, cool, okay. Yeah. Is the sycamore. More well, sycamore. This yeah. stuff's really nice and rippled here as well. Looks lovely. Cool. And then we got these bits around the back. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, cedar. 
This was again from the same cemetery that the redwood came from. It was dead standing, so I don't know the exact type of cedar tree, um, but it was all just going to be logged up. And they said, oh, if you're taking the redwood, do you want the cedar? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, please. That's lovely. And then these? Yeah. Those are, again, cedar cookies. The, the center was kind of rotted out, yeah. so I couldn't plank it. And I thought, right, let's try some cookies. Um, and again, I, you, know, you could fill up the center um, with glass or resin, and there would be a lovely coffee table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. OK, mm. so yeah, like I said, Blaze, he pretty much saws all this stuff up. We've got a sawmill and stuff on site, and we're actually going to slab up some timber later on in this video. Uh, yeah. We can uh, chuck out a big slab if you want, lean it up here. We can do that one or a redwood or whatever you like, really, I don't mind. Grab my keys. Where did I put my keys? So we've got this big slab out. Um, what is this? Sycamore. Sycamore. Yeah. Okay. It's a type of maple. And there's a few things going on with this. Uh, this big black mark. It's that's a sort of fungus. That's the kind of fungus that starts spalting. Yeah. Um, sycamore is notoriously difficult to dry. Mm -hmm. Some people say dry it on end like this. You always get surface fungus um, and this darker one is the is the one to worry about this is actually very good uh, for sycamore i as soon as i've milled it i then wash it down right it's kind of counterintuitive because you're trying to dry the wood mm -hmm. but i wash it down to get every grain of sawdust off it yeah. it's that kind of sawdust that creates the fungus the most okay because it's wood dust with oxygen surrounding it. Yeah, yeah. So I meticulously clean them after I've milled it. So I've commonly seen with sycamore, you get the gray marks in them. So exactly. Would that, that be called, yeah. is that this? That's or? what the, that is, but that's very light. You'll be able to sand through that right. without too much problem okay. um, or plain. Yeah. And then yeah. the white stuff here. Again, this is fungus, but this is just surface fungus. It doesn't affect the color. Yeah. You can scrape that off um, or sand it off. So it'll come off with no problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Again, it's such a just unique piece. Yeah. So what, when people buy stuff like this, what do they normally do with it? Uh, difficult to say, really. Um, kind of unique pieces like this, I usually get people asking, can I help with them with the cutting? Okay. Because uh, of the size of this, they'll, if they want a table, could I just square up this edge and shorten that piece and then give it a rough mm -hmm. surface? And yeah. then they'll do the actual finishing themselves. Mm -hmm. So people um, won't try and resaw material out of this as much. They usually just use it as a... Yeah, I would have said so. Yeah. You could, you could for sure uh, resaw it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not something I've done a lot of. <laughs> no. <laughs> you, you've obviously done more of that. Yeah. But uh, I suppose you could. There'd be some lovely grain in here for I mean, jewellery boxes or something. Looking at the ripples down here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, where'd you say this grew? Uh, this was about 20 miles north of here, near Buckingham. Right, and it was on the side of a road. Yeah. And so that's what caused the rippling or? It's, the rippling comes, as I understand it, from being hit by wind. Okay. So it's a reaction to strengthen the, tr the grain of the tree. Yeah. So because it's on the edge of a woodland, or in this case, it was a field tree, it was kind of wide and not very tall. Mm -hmm. um, and the kind of strengthening, getting buffeted by the wind in all directions, the grain wriggles then to right. strengthen itself. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, it's just, I mean, down here, that is, you can see, it, it's difficult to tell if it's saw marks or if it's ripples. But yeah, it's there quite, is a bit of both, but yeah. you're absolutely, there, it is very rippled. Yeah. 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 I'm going to see it, especially in the split here, actually, like the rippling on that, uh -huh. that is a giveaway of what the grain is actually doing in here. So this is uh, included bark where the tree has grown and it's sandwiched bark in between yeah. and that's not allowed the wood to fuse. So it was, a, it was a call when I milled it, which direction do I mill it from? Yeah. I wanted the crotch figure. On this one it's split, there's plenty of others that it hasn't got that split. Mm -hmm. um, Again, it's just potential to make a feature from there. Exactly, it? exactly yeah. that. This and I cool. leave, I left these ends as long as I could. Yeah. Uh, this was the governing factor, the width from here to here. 
Right. Uh, so I had to shave off a little bit on the side of for that. For the bar length, was that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Amazing. But you could still use those that uh, to have a table leg finishing here and here. Ah, uh, that's a good point. And a waterfall edge, yeah. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. That would be very nice. Holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> So this was among the first redwoods planted in the UK. It was uh, from a cemetery in Woking. Uh -huh. And there's a whole avenue of redwoods and this one was identified as being uh, in danger of collapse uh, for various reasons. It wasn't my decision. Um, it was a friend of mine's company who was taking it down and he just phoned me up and said, Blaze, do you want the wood? Or we're gonna break it up into small bits and no. chip it and send it to Slough Power Station. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so much nicer than I thought. It's incredible. It's so nice to work with. It's, it's quite surprisingly light as well. I reckon we could, you know, I can easily pick that Fine. half of it up. It's, it's surprisingly light. So when you say easy to work with, do you mean just slabbing it or would it's you say? Yeah, when you're cutting it, it's soft. Yeah. The saw cuts it beautifully quickly. Um, and you know, I, I, I pride myself on the finish I get from a chainsaw, <laughs> you know, uh, there's always a little rough part on the, when the chainsaw comes in or yeah. goes off the saw, but I pride Do myself you know, on that finish. Actually, that you wouldn't expect that off a chainsaw. No. That is, that is really impressive actually. I mean, it's rough sawn, but that's comparable, comparable to a bandsaw. It's not, oh, easily. it's not it's exactly the same bandsaw the the lines would be finer because you've got more teeth yeah. etc but in terms of for chainsaw flatness. milling yeah 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 and for flatness yeah yeah so i mean drying it is a key part of this yeah an absolutely key part um and that's why i air dry it for a number of years mm. i mean you see what the stickers are in this how vibrant that is underneath yeah. as well absolutely yeah wow cracking <laughs> i mean if i was to make a dining table it would be this I'll um, show you the one in my mum's house. I made mum a worktop yeah. out of this, yeah. It's oh, really nice. Awesome. Amazing. <laughs> and I mean, you could waterfall edge this. This is four metres long. Exactly. So you could exactly. just do yourself a, a table leg at 900 here and one there, and you still have a kind of probably a six foot table in the middle. Oh, easy. Easy, yeah. Just seeing this stuff, ideas just start <laughs> whirring. <laughs> Amazing. Cool. So the other thing was the route round here. We forgot to cover that earlier. Yeah. Can we have a look at yeah, that? Yeah, let's, That's really yeah, let's. Yeah. <laughs> so what is this? This is an oak stump. And I, I milled the trunk for a customer. He kept all the wood. Uh, it was quite painful to log it all up and uh, plank it all up and give it all to him. But you know, that's how it goes sometimes. I do do that. Um, but this, tr this was growing in very sandy soil. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the area because my grandparents lived nearby and I knew if it was in sand, this could be one of the only oak trunks that I could get that didn't have, most stumps like this will have enormous stones fused into the roots yes. where it's constricted around it and it's very difficult to cut them up. Mm. So I knew this was in sandy soil. I thought it's worth paying the lorry to get it back to the yard. I want to make something from it. A big, I could see a big glass sheet on top here, cut it all off flush. Yeah. Have a gorgeous kind of conference or reception hall table for a hotel or something. I. It was too good to leave rotting in the corner of a field. Absolutely. <laughs> we were saying earlier, if any of you watch Saturday Kitchen in the UK, they have a teak root table, mm. which is very similar to this with a glass top and it looks stunning. Mm. My mum's been wanting one for like five years, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the kind of thing that would, that would do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's so just I, all I've done with this is jet wash it, which yeah. took off the sapwood. Mm -hmm. um, and I've now in that predicament of what do I do with it? Could, is this going to be one table or do I cut this into slices and make it into wall art? And it's just one of those things that I'm constantly wrestling with. And that's mm. why it's still here. <laughs> Cause <laughs> I long? just, yeah, probably three or four years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is lovely. 
It is lovely. Okay, cool. Should we get on to sawing that timber then? Yeah, let's do that's, that. Nice. Let's do it. So we're just going to go over and slab up some timber now. Um, while we're over here, mm -hmm. let's cover like how, what times are you open and how do people get hold of you? So I've got a website and there's a lot of pictures on the website of individual slabs. Yep. And uh, there's a contact form on there. You can send me an email. Um, you know, people can come at weekends and mm -hmm. during the week. Uh, you know, just send me an email, I'll ring you back and we'll arrange a time. So people need to get hold of you beforehand and yeah. then just arrange yeah, a meeting yeah. time. Perfect. Okay, and that's all of it. What's the name of your website? Uh, it's blazingtrees.com. Blazing Trees. We'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, okay, so this is the, these are all the slabs that you got. Yeah. Um, I mean, it'd be cool to go through these as well, I think, just because you got a <laughs> yeah, good sure. selection here. So, sure. so yeah, this one, what's this? This is more redwood. This is the last piece. I haven't actually milled this yet. Um, so this was the same tree that was in the far left yeah. corner? so there's two other pieces. There's a 3.6 metre section under this one mm -hmm. when it was stood up, and then a 2.5 metre section below that. And then there was a good 40, 50 foot on top. It was an enormous tree. Madness. Mm. That is mad. Mm. I mean, we're looking at all the knots coming out of this as well. I can't wait to open this up. Yeah. I can't wait. Um, I just need more space to dry the wood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you need redwood, you know where to come. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. And then, right. What are these ones over here then? So we got a, what's this, a spalted beech, do you say? Uh, this is oak. This oak big there. one. Yeah. yeah. English oak. And then that one. Uh, that was a piece of larch. Oh, that was the larch, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. There's a spalted beech kind of bench seat thing there. Wow. It might be a bit gone now. <laughs> There's more uh, redwood there and more cedar. And this last piece of this sycamore from the one we just looked at. Oh yeah. So I think that'd be a good one to, to cut a bit off. Yeah. Let's do that. Mm. Let's do that. Perfect. Cool. So where are we gonna, do you, are you plonking it here or? Yeah, we'll just do it here. Oh, of course, yeah, you got the chainsaw in there. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I mean, I could mill. move it onto the log deck, the but it's kind, of, it's kind of set up there. I think that's good to go. Yeah, yeah. We can just flatten the grass anywhere you want. Or... Yeah. Sweet. Slow-mo opportunities here, Rob. Right, so chainsaw milling is done and 
one of the most satisfying experiences I've ever had in the good. woodworking world. Good. How did I do? <laughs> yeah, great. No, really good. Picked up very quickly. A um, lot of people struggle to balance the revs, you know, because you, you're on full throttle and you're balancing it with the winch. So a very nice, smooth cut. Amazing. Good work. So I've managed to, I'm, we're keeping two of the slabs that I cut off, or I cut off one of them, Blaze did the other one. Uh, what did you say? It was sycamore, yeah? Sycamore, yeah. Sycamore, cool. Maple. So yeah, I've got two slabs of that. They're now on the roof of my car, and in about a year's time when they're all dry, uh, I'm definitely going to make a project of it. And also, I have no doubt we're going to be back here at some point in the future, hopefully. Excellent, you're welcome. Cutting yeah. up a log or something like yeah. that, entire yeah. log. Yeah. Yeah, should be really good. Really looking forward to it and get involved with more of what Blaze does in the future. So. Thank you Brilliant. very much for today. Nice it's been stuff. amazing. No, it's been really great. good. Uh, as always, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you want to know about more of what Blaze does, then there's a link to his website in the description. And obviously, yeah, get hold of him because there is some amazing, amazing stuff here. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for watching, guys. See you in the next video.